I want to welcome everybody and thank you for coming today. My name's John Dix. I'm honored to be the secretary of the Rochester Dam Regional Water Commission. On behalf of the commission, we're pleased to welcome each of you to celebrate the renovation project that we have going on behind us, along with saying thanks to our great legislative group in Washington, led by Senator McConnell. Before we start, I do want to introduce a few local leaders and some, and some folks that have been really important to this project. First, uh, from Muhlenberg County, Judge Exec Curtis McGee, Judge, and along with District Commissioner Darren Benton and Sheriff Ricky Allen, appreciate your all's help in, in getting this site uh, set up for us. In Butler County, we have Judge Exec Tim Fleener and City of Morgantown Mayor Billy Phelps. Thank you guys. And of course, we're here in Rochester, just on the outskirts of Rochester. It wouldn't be right if we didn't have the Rochester Mayor. Mayor Martha Rowe, thank you so much for lending us your city. Unfortunately, Ohio County Judge Exec David Johnson couldn't be here today, but uh, Joanna Shake uh, is representing him well, and we just want to thank her and, and their support from the Green River Area Development District. Also, I believe uh, John Crosby is here from uh, Senator Paul's office, so thank, thank you. I'd like to also introduce the Rochester Dam Regional Water Commission itself. We at, we're made up by three utility members and two at-large members. Our utility members are Walt Beasley of Ohio County Water District, Weymouth Martin of Butler County Water System, and Randall Gasky of Morgantown Utilities Commission. Our at-large members are John Wagler of Purdue, who is our corporate partner in this, this adventure, along with Charlie Shields of Ohio County Emergency Management. And I wouldn't be right in not thanking Damon Talley, who has guided us over the last seven years. Damon is our attorney and has just been a great partner, along with Mark Knight, who's the general manager of, uh, of Purdue. So thank you all very much. And of course, all this going on behind us wouldn't be possible if we didn't have some great facilitators with our engineering firm Stantec who's really been a part of this for over 10 years and Sinesis Construction our contractor doing a wonderful job under some tough conditions and I'd also like to thank Bob Hunter of Hunter Consulting who's been our grant administrator and Gary Larimore of Kentucky Rural Water Finance Corporation who's provided our interim financing. So let's give them all a round of applause, please. All right, well, it's my pleasure right now to introduce the chairman of the Rochester Dam Regional Water Commission, Weymouth Martin. Thank you, John, for, I just want to tell, especially the Butler Countyans, this is not another study of this dam. This has been the most studied dam in, in the world, I think. But we are at the point now that uh, we're going we're gonna to correct this dam and assure the water supply for over 50,000 people that are using water out of this dam. It goes back a long way. The dam goes back a long way. It's 180 years old. It is a timber uh, cradle uh, with rock in it type dam. But as you can see, it's... Uh, it needs some help. So we've been on this uh, for some time. Uh, Senator McConnell uh, helped us get funding for the final study on this dam. And that final study gave us options on what we could do to, to shore this dam up. Those options range from replacing the dam for $21 million. Now this was back in 2009. I don't know what it would be now. Uh, 
to what we selected is the approach we would take uh, takes about four million dollars to do this so uh, we're, we realized at the time that if we were going to get any money we need to have a governmental agency so we formed the Rochester Dam Regional Water Commission made up of all the counties affected and that group was formed primarily so that we would be eligible for grants and loans and things like that. And that's really what got us started on it uh, as far as being a commission. In uh, 2013 was when we formed this. In 2016, uh, Senator Connell came to our help again and uh, he had a statement put in a, an existing bill uh, that would give uh, us the right to take over this dam. Representative Guthrie helped us up on that also. So there is a there is a one-liner in a bill that says that we can take this dam over, and in fact we're going to we're going to own this dam uh, shortly. Uh, we've been working with the Corps of Engineers. Uh, They've, they've had some good ideas of, of what we needed to do and things like that. But as you see, we are at the point that we've, we've started on this and uh, we're looking forward to this being completed. We want to thank all the people uh, that has helped us in this, especially the local water districts. We got a $3 million grant. Senator McConnell helped us get a $3 million grant. It cost $4 million. So the other million dollars, the, the water districts affected in Purdue, they all uh, agreed that we were going to foot that bill and we got, we got another loan for a million dollars. And that, that loan is being paid off by these different districts and by the water users of that district on a prorated basis based upon how many people's in each water district. So we want to thank them for getting us to this point and uh, I just Thank everybody for their support up to this point. Thank you. Thank you, Weymouth. Uh, you know, work does not occur in the rivers unless you've got a great partnership with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. We've been very fortunate to work with the Louisville District of Army Corps of Engineers. Thinking outside the box, they helped us develop a lease for the dam so we could apply for that funding that we've talked about. And the district is currently led by Colonel Eric Crispina. He assumed command on, on June 25th. So he's, he's uh, a relatively newcomer to the district, but we're so happy to have him here. Prior to assuming command, he served as Corps of Engineers for the 3rd Armored Corps at Fort Hood. In this assignment, he was deployed to Kuwait, where he led the Combined Joint Engineer Directive for Operation Inherent Resolve. Colonel Crispino was commissioned as a field artillery officer in 1998 before transitioning to the engineering branch during his time as a faculty member for the Department of Civil and Mechanical Engineering at the U.S. Military Academy. Colonel Crispino, a native of Southington, Connecticut, holds a Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering from the United States Military Academy, a Master of Science in Civil Engineering from Virginia Tech, go Hokies, and a Master of Strategic Studies from the U.S. Army War College. I'm pleased to, to welcome Colonel Crispino. Thank you, John, for the introduction and the opportunity to attend today's event. Um, I'd also like to thank both Senator McConnell and Representative Guthrie uh, for their support and leadership to, um, and their interest in the work that the Corps does here in the, in the Green River Basin. I have a few remarks today that I'd like to make uh, regarding the, our history on this project. Uh, as, as John just mentioned, I assumed command uh, three weeks ago of the Louisville District, but during my three short weeks, it's been a, a privilege to see all of the work that the Corps of Engineers District, uh, Louisville District does, and, and this is no exception to that. Here in the Green River Basin, the Corps has a, an extensive presence uh, with four 
uh, multi-purpose reservoirs and two active locks and dams that are in the lower portion of the basin. Um, Rochester is one of five other locks and dams that the Corps owns, but are no longer operated for commercial navigation. So while um, we don't see barges moving up and down uh, the river through this section, the Corps understands that the long-term stability of Rochester is an important component of the economic vitality of this portion of the, of the Commonwealth. This critical piece of infrastructure has been at the forefront of how the Corps makes decisions on managing the life cycle of locks and dams that are no longer required to be used for navigation. Based on collaboration with numerous stakeholders, uh, such as the Rochester Dam Regional Water Commission, the Nature Conservancy, we were able to complete a disposition study in 2014, and then Congress enacted legislation in 2016 uh, to remove the core mission of navigation at these facilities. Removing navigation as, as one of our responsibilities has allowed for the rehabilitation work that is going on now to occur. Also important, this legislation directed the transfer of the Rochester Dam to the Commission, which provided an avenue for the, uh, to ensure the long-term stability of the dam rested with those, those communities who depended upon it for its water supply. Collaboration and problem solving have been key to realizing the work that is going on today. Um, our disposition study uh, was completed in 2014, and then the Corps worked with the Commission later to enter into a lease so that stabilization work could occur prior to final transfer of the lock and dam. And this was really unique across uh, the Corps' portfolio. The Corps and the Commission were also able to partner on a number of, uh, of components of, for permitting for the dam rehabilitation, such as uh, cultural resource surveys, so that efforts could be streamlined and we could avoid duplication of effort. The Corps understood that timing for the permitting was critical, and I'm happy that we could quickly move through our review processes while meeting our statutory obligations. This type of creative thinking and partnership building are essential to tackling water resource challenges uh, in the future. As you know, the, the Green River is a significant cultural, economic, and environmental resource to both the region and the nation, and I'm excited to get to know this group better during my time as a Louisville District Commander and to continue the, the work that is happening within the basin. Please not hesitate to reach out to me or my staff uh, in the future if there are ways that we could better serve this community. Again, thank you, John. Uh, thank you in the, to the Commission, Senator O'Connell, Representative Guthrie, uh, for the opportunity today to represent the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Thank you, Colonel. Uh, next, another not stranger of, uh, of our area is Congressman Brett, Brett, Brett Guthrie, who represents Kentucky's second district. He serves on the House Education and Labor and House Energy and Commerce Committees, which is the oldest committee in Congress. I didn't realize that. Where you are the top Republican on the oversight and investigations. Those are things that we need to re always remember. Another graduate of U.S. Military Academy at West Point, he went on to serve as a field artillery officer in the 101st Airborne. Congressman Guthrie is a true friend of rural water. He's always been, been there when we need him. So it's my pleasure to introduce Congressman Guthrie. Thank you. I guess I better be brief because it looks like the rain's coming on this side of the tent anyway. So thank you so much for being here. And when I first got into the State Senate, I remember Shane Wells called when I first got uh, Butler County had a list of things he needed for Rochester. One was the Rochester Dam, and it was correct. We spent twice the money studying it as it's going to take to fix it. So during redistricting in Congress, I get a phone call from Shane after I got Butler County back. I was excited about it because it's one of my, is my best performing county for me. And boom, all of a sudden he says, what are you going to do about Rochester Dam? And I'll tell you, it took, it looked like an unsolvable problem because of, of just what it took to, to take care of this issue. But local leaders, local people taking the responsibility, working with state leaders, and specifically working with leaders in Washington, D.C., and not just me, the leader I get to work with. One of the great criticisms I've heard in Washington, D.C. about Leader McConnell is he just does too much for Kentucky. 
I says, well, if you're in Washington, D.C., you may not like that. But if you're from Kentucky, that's about as good as it gets. Let me tell you what happened yesterday. I was on a phone call with our hospitals, and our hospital CEO said of the CARES Act, they said, we really can't complain. It really takes care of rural hospitals. I said, well, the CARES Act, which was the COVID funding, was negotiated by five people, two from New York, Secretary Mnuchin and uh, Chuck Schumer, two from California, McCarthy and, and Speaker Pelosi, and one is from rural America. And I would have to say the influence and they're able to put the thumb on its scale for projects like this, for projects that take care of Kentucky, I don't have a better drafting partner whatsoever in uh, Washington, D.C. than Senator McConnell. And I'm a NASCAR fan. And you know, if you're going to have a drafting partner, you want the fastest car on the track pushing you, if they're behind you, pushing you as you can go. And he has been pushing me in the House. I've been happy to work for him in the Senate. And we're here today, and make no mistake about it, the money, the three million that we're talking about, we all work together on. We're here today because we have a leader at the five people negotiate the final big bills. Somebody from the White House and four in the, in the Congress. And we have a seat at the table, and the only one that's not from California or New York. And I'll close with this. We couldn't stand here and close without one of my favorite people just thinking if the Internet's correct and it's not always correct, they actually took half the ashes of John Prine and brought them here. And so uh, my hat's off, and God rest his soul to his family. And uh, God bless well, how famous he's made Rochester Dam. So we appreciate it very much and appreciate working with you, Leader McConnell. Thank you very much. All right. Well, we got some sprinkling going on, so I'm going to be quick about introducing uh, our next speaker because he really doesn't need an introduction. You know him. We just want to thank him. We want to thank him for all the things he's done for the Rochester Dam and our community for our drinking water. Uh, in 2009, he made sure funding was available for the study, as you've heard about. In 2016, Senator McConnell, along with Larry Cox, thank you, Larry, uh, worked up uh, the language that we needed for disposition of the dams along the Green River and the Barren River as a part of the WIN Act. And then in 2017, when, when we needed funding, he was there to help us, guide us, and get us through the EDA process to get our $3 million grant, which was the max they could give out at that time. So we are blessed to have a leader and a representative in Kentucky that has been the longest Republican leader in the history of Congress. So with that, I'm proud to introduce Senator McConnell. Well, thank you very much, John. It's great to be here today with all of you to see my friend Brett Guthrie, to hear from the core and local leadership. Uh, <laughs> Brett mentioned that I'm uh, always involved in these big discussions, but I must tell you that the most um, I enjoy most out of my job is projects like the one right behind us, uh, taking care of needs in Kentucky are the most important things that I'm engaged in. Uh, Brett mentioned I'm the only one of the four congressional leaders not from New York or California. I'm kind of proud of that. My job is to look out for middle America, and the perfect example of it is right behind us. And I've got a great partner over in the House in Brett Guthrie to make sure it makes it all the way through the process. I want to single out once again my former state <coughs> director, Larry Cox. Larry, are you here? Yeah, let me, let me tell you, I wouldn't have heard of this project but for Larry Cox. He was my state director at the time, a great outdoorsman who's now a, a proud owner of a farm up in Hart County. And he uh, was looking at the Green River and first began to talk about the need along the Green River to take out a number of these old uh, dams and some of them were taking out and not replacing them, but that wouldn't work here in Rochester because as we pointed out earlier we had 50,000 people who depended on the water supply so just Tearing down this marvelous dam that was put up in 1838 Was not enough. It was not a practical solution to what this area needed so creatively we managed to get it out of the core and 
into uh, uh, private hands and then developed a grant to help pay for it. And now it's pretty darn exciting. I know you agree with me to see it over here. It's apparently going to be finished by November, which is extraordinary. And I just want to tell you how much I appreciate the opportunity to be involved in this project and how much satisfaction uh, it gives me uh, to see it uh, up to completion. So thank you very much. And if there are any questions by any of our press people here at this point, I'll be glad to take a couple. <laughs> Technical question about how it's being fixed with maybe John. Yeah, John, I think that's one I can't Oh, okay, ask. I'll be glad. What work you're having to do? Yeah, uh, of course, with a structure that's 18 built in 1838, uh, there's been some challenges uh, with uh, deterioration over the years. Uh, just upstream from here is what we call Woodbury Dam. It it failed in 1965, and we were very concerned. We did not want to have that happen here because of the, as we've said, the uh, 50,000 folks that depend on water supply and the jobs that are inv involved here. Uh, this work consists of basically three phases. If you look, a couple of phases are, are pictured over on the right side of the tent, but uh, uh, three phases include securing the uh, lock, which was done last fall. Uh, the current work is securing the, what was an old mill, an old mill in the 1800s that was on this river that's where the work is being uh, done right now. We're securing the mill race right now. And so that work will be completed. Then they'll move into the main, main channel where they'll be uh, uh, securing and building, basically restoring the dam to its original level. There's, there's not going to be any increases. And we're just basically going back to the original level of the dam to protect the pool of water. 